two Titan videos in as many weeks? You know the project's getting serious now, huh? This is Guy, you're watching Midwinter Minis, and last week I really wanted to carry on and paint the actual details on the model's bases, but as I said, it was just way too hot in the studio to paint. And now it's a little bit cooler, I'm still in the mood to get it done, so let's just bloody do it, huh? This video is sponsored by me. Go buy one of my cool post Vitruvian man signed art prints from midwinterminis.com. <laughs> right. Painting. I don't want to use an airbrush on this Titan if I can help it, but hey, that Smash Tower hammerhead isn't technically the Titan, right? So let's just do some quick base coats. Also, even though Hattie worked for Games Workshop for three years and had models featured in White Dwarf, she's never used an airbrush, so I'll give her a shot so she can learn the basics. And while you can control the direction and intensity of the airbrush's spray, you can't really control how tight the edges of the spray are, and we don't want to accidentally paint the Titan's nicely weathered toes, so we quickly covered up their edges with some good old masking tape. A quick wrap around the edges and a tuck underneath, and we're good to go. Oh, he looks like he's wearing a little sock, or one of those surgical paper shoe things. For the undercoat, I'll give the hammerhead a blast with white acrylic ink. Obviously trying to avoid the toes, but knowing that if I overspray them a little bit it won't matter because they're protected by the tape. And we're also going to be totally painting the earth and floor tiles on the base after this, so it doesn't matter if they get some overspray as well. So now I've checked the airbrush is working nicely with that white, I handed it over to Hattie to base coat the model using Vallejo Model Air Red, which is actually pretty magenta unless you give it three or four coats. Now I know this isn't really the point of this video, but if you think it might be useful to get some beginner airbrushing tips or general do's and don'ts of airbrushing in a future video, let us know in the comments. We thinned the paint a little bit with Vallejo Airbrush Thinner, mixing it with the paint in the cup, and then tested it on some scrap paper. I mean, for a red, this is the hottest pink I've ever seen. This is a Barbie Funtime towel machine. The key when laying down base coats with an airbrush is to do it in light passes and from multiple angles. Don't just keep spraying in the same place until you've got a solid colour, as it just gets wet and then the paint starts to spider out and streak. Let it dry, which it will do pretty quickly, and then come back for more. Patty was a pretty quick study and laid down a nice even base coat of the Vallejo Red. Next up, some quick armour panel shading using Signal Blue, firing a little bit into the recesses of the armour panels and into the deeper areas under the Titan's foot. Now to push in some highlights, Vallejo's Squid Pink was used sparingly on the larger panels and more prominent areas. I find this is one of the most beginner friendly and effective uses for airbrushes, making what are essentially fancy base coats with quick colour fades, shadows and rough highlights all applied in minutes rather than hours. Please ignore all of my little splats and sputters, this is my first time airbrushing, but it was deeply satisfying and I really get the appeal of airbrushes now. And one final job for the airbrush, I'm going to give the hammerhead a couple of coats of gloss varnish. Now I don't want the final model to be shiny, but by doing this now it'll change the way the washes behave on the surface of the model, and they'll want to find and settle into the recesses a lot more. Right, so, washes. I'm going to mix Druchii Violet with Caraberg Crimson together to make a shade that will match the colour palette, and then use a big brush to slop it on all over the model. As you can see, this is going into the recesses much more than the shade paint normally would, but for the places where it was pooling a bit on the larger surfaces, I blotted it away with some torn kitchen paper. To break up the airbrush texture and give the alien armour a more interesting look, I stippled on some Vallejo Squid Pink on the flatter areas, with about the same amount of paint on the brush that I would normally have if I was dry brushing, and yeah, while I was there I also dry brushed a few of the pointier edges like the empty mounting points for the drones. Ok, that's all the messy work on the Tau armour out the way, so now we can peel off that masking tape and reveal the nice neat border between the weathered feet and the pinky purple hover tank. Lovely. Even though this hammerhead is very much a terrain feature now, it's still a huge model by Warhammer standards and it deserves a bit of detail to actually sell the effect and make it look extra impressive. Using squid ink again, I did some quick and dirty edge highlights on the curves around the big armour panels. Now there aren't many hard edges and straight lines on this model to edge your brush along, and the base of the Titan's feet really got in the way of the careful brushwork, so I just had to wing it and do some sketchy straight lines from awkward angles as best I could. I then started to base coat all the metal bits, vents, broken cables and engine parts with Vallejo black metal. And while I was doing that, Hattie started painting the floor tiles using a nice triad of golds. 
Balthazar gold for the base coat, greedy gold for a stippled texture, and then later on polished gold for a final stippling. Now before that final highlight stage on the floor tiles though, we gave each one a good coat of Agrax Earthshade, and no point using the palette here, straight from the bottle to the model. Quick and dirty. So yeah, as I said, once that was dry, a final highlight of polished gold, and then we moved on to some weathering. Dirty down verdigris will give quick and easy results. Running it into the cracks and crevices, bolts and recesses should give the warm metal an ancient, well-worn look. It dries in minutes and creates this crazy effect. Now if it's a bit too much, like I thought this area was, you can give it a wipe with a damp brush and it'll feather out and make the effect a bit more subtle. Okay, while we wait for that to dry, we can probably move on to the actual earth on the base. I cut back into the oversprayed purple and dry brush gold areas with Katachan Flesh. And again, while I waited for that to dry, I went back to highlighting the dark metal areas on the hammerhead with Vallejo Aluminium Paint. Also, random fun fact, did you know that the way Americans say aluminium, aluminum, is actually the original spelling and pronunciation from the guy who discovered the element? What a crazy world, I've been living a lie. Now that brown base is pretty much dry, we gave it a heavy dry brush with Vallejo Khaki and also smushed some onto the areas of the hammerhead and Titan's feet that were textured by the paste we used in the last episode. And after that, we gave the earth a slightly lighter dry brush with pale sand. Did someone say pale sand? Now, being realistic here, there's no way a massive building-sized war machine stomping around a battlefield would have totally clean toes, and dust and debris are going to be settling on it, especially in the recesses. To show this, I heavily diluted some khaki paint with water, about one part paint to five or six parts water, and then we painted that randomly all over the toes, foot base plate, and also some spots on the hammerhead too. It looks pretty nice after just one coat, but we could add another to really up the dirt factor. Very nice, very nice. Now, finally, to stop the base looking so washed out and monotone, we used a mix of three Vallejo washes, sepia, flesh, and umber, to add some variety and colour into the earth. These shades are thin enough that the highlight texture will still show through, but it'll stain it a nice mix of realistic earth tones. And there we go. Dusty toes, beautifully patinaed floor plates, alien metal, filthy dirt. What more could you want? And by the way, I noticed a few comments in the last video wondering why the model was wobbling so much when we were dry brushing and stippling the metal parts. And it's definitely because at the moment the Titan's legs are only connected by the small ball socket on the foot plate. It is reinforced with a carbon rod, but yeah, it's a bit scary to have such a pricey model wobbling around all over the place when you're trying to paint it. It will get much more robust once we attach the toe pistons, because each ankle will have five support points rather than just one. I can't wait to carry on with this model and show you more Titan stuff, but my next video is going to be for all the retro Warhammer fans out there, where I try to paint some 90s Ultramarines to a competition standard under the guidance and tutelage of one of the most incredibly talented miniature painters on the planet. Can you guess who it's going to be? Let me know in the comments, and I hope to see you then. Bye for now.